Hello everyone, this is Bradley. I saw this question on Stack Exchange talking about a reference from Grayscale Gorilla using Cinema 4D and then people wonder how to do this in Blender. I didn't really search for that reference on their Instagram but roughly I can imagine the animation is like donuts falling around like balloons or whatever and basically something you can watch in right now. So of course there may be more variances or improvements to the whole thing to make it uh, more interesting, but I would just explain the principle to do this animation and leave the, all the responsibility to you to improve that. In general, there are two methods, uh, using particle system or not using particle system. Both methods currently requires rigid body uh, simulation. Anyway, I will start. So I will firstly show the particle method uh, and uh, definitely it requires animation node. Just to explain why they require animation node. So if we add a particle system, uh, I don't know how long it will take for this older particle system to be completely outdated compared to the new node-based uh, particle system. Uh, but this particle system currently can only interact with objects, the collision object. But the particles cannot interact with each other. So if you take a collision or other things, it basically don't really work. Uh, and now we definitely add a Sophia, right? So it goes to a particle system and it goes to the render and sets. Actually, it does not matter. Uh, you just uh, render every noise or halos, you're fine. We won't see that. The entire point is I want to have basically like one and the lifetime to be 1000. And you can determine the numbers like uh, 50 or so, whatever. And I'm going to take the sources into volumes. And this is why I need this entire whole thing. Uh, I probably will turn down the velocity to make it zero uh, because I don't want it to fly. So basically, this is it. Okay, uh, and the, the this particle system has done its job. Uh, another thing is, if you turn on, if you turn on the timeline, it will just fall with the gravity. So we turn down the gravity. Uh, will it still fall? Yeah, it will stay in place. So we go to the animation node. So the, the entire whole problem of this particle system is it cannot have rigid body with its particles. So let's you do these rigid bodies by ourselves. So I'm going to use an object instance, and I'm going to create a um, probably a whatever stuff, Ico Sphere, UV Sphere. Let's just make a UV Sphere. Because we're going to instance them many times, so just uh, make it low poly, the instance. Uh, and I'm going to copy that for a certain amount of time, as much as the particle system. So now let's get a particle system from the object. So we get uh, from our sphere. <coughs> and the particle, in, uh, particles data. And we take the active and we got a location. So the location definitely is also the amount of particles we have, which is 50. And then now we are going to put these locations into our instancer. Uh, by the way, I need to activate a rigid body in our instancer. Where is the rigid body? Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. Uh, turn on a rigid body. And I think basically it's fine. And then I'm going to turn off this sink so that the physics can do well. Uh, I think this is already good enough. And then turn on the object transform output. So we turn on these locations. So location goes to locations. So now uh, they're actually too large. So let's just get a vector form values. Uh, turn the downs. Or you can go to the edit mode to change all these values as well. It does not really matter. So it actually does not. Uh, I'm just uh, the reason I'm using particle system is simply to get their locations so that I can make particles for my own. But otherwise, I don't need this particle system at all. And I'm going to copy the full object and I throw this instance uh, to a hidden collection. Now I'm only going to work uh, look at what has been actually instances, and I don't even need to know this particle system as well. So just uh, looking at how it actually works. So you can see now they actually exploded. Um, because they exploded because the intersection causes a force to explode them up. So how can I actually make them uh, close to the center? 
So there are many different ways, including using force field. So I'm just going to add a force field uh, and this add a strength to one, negative 1000, something like that. So they will explode and they will attract. So now I have kind of blah, 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 whatever, whatever it is kind of stuff. You just give some them a lot of time, they will work like this. And you definitely can make it more interesting and increase your timelines, other things. Uh, one thing I have to remind you, or actually maybe this is my own problems. I personally cannot really bake the uh, physics while I'm using animation node. Actually, even without using the animation node, I cannot bake the physics. Um, and uh, this is about it. Um, there are also some other issues, but I probably will not explain right now. Uh, think so now it basically works. Uh, it can work with a balloon and many, many other things as well. And this is it. You got the idea. Uh, one thing I just have to mention. Uh, if you want the physics go on later uh, in both in either methods, so you just need to animate this animated. I've actually done tons of tutorials about this animated, so I'm not going to uh, explain more about this. Just to say, I have this uh, physical legs trigger, and you can trigger using a fall and so. On. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, it will be very interesting to see if you can actually make a more interesting animation by using this principle as well. Uh, I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.